the day many people, including me, have been waiting for is finally here. With Massachusetts now in phase three of reopening, museums can welcome back visitors. Among the first to open was the ICA, which is where we went to go to get a feel for the new normal. My guide, ICA Deputy Director Kelly Gifford. Kelly Gifford, thank you so much for welcoming <laughs> us. This is a very exciting moment. We get to go back into museums now. This must be a very exciting moment for you, too. Yeah, it's incredible. You're about to take us through, but but is it a vastly different experience? How, how would you characterize it? I would describe it as a different experience that is all focused on keeping visitors and staff safe while still having the museum experience that you love and know. So we will mask up, we will yep. socially distance and, and work our way through the ICA. Let's do it. <laughs> like most museums across the state, the ICA closed abruptly in mid-March with the onset of the COVID-19 crisis. Four months later, the museum has cautiously reopened. Staff, which the ICA kept fully employed, has been retrained for the new normal. And these are throughout the galleries, mainly in the doorways where the space is more tight. But visitors will need a bit of retraining too. We no longer are going to have a bag and coat check, but there is going to be a self-check area for people who want that. And we're not going to have food and drink inside the museum at this time. No tickets either, at least paper ones, and they must be purchased in advance. So you walk up. You'll see that there'll be a sign letting you know that you can get, pull up your ticket for contactless, contactless entry. And also, we've included all of our education materials um, online as well. So you can take a quick picture of the QR code, and then you have all the wall text and labels on your phone as well. Here, you'll also find reminders to maintain social distancing and limits to the number of people in elevators. But the galleries themselves do not feel all that different. At first, we were thinking there would be a prescribed route and we'd have people all go the same way. But the way our galleries are set up and the low, low capacity of number of people that we're allowing in, we decided that was going to possibly create more pinch points. So we are going to let people set their own journey in the galleries and explore as, on their own. Kelly, what about some of the things that we can't necessarily see, like airflow? Yeah, so airflow is specifically important to have a healthy building. We have been working with our director of facilities to look at our air filtration and ensure that there's constant movement within the galleries. So we've enhanced that as well. Still a conundrum is Kusama. For the moment, Japanese artist Yoyoi Kusama's wildly popular infinity mirror room can't be seen past the polka dots. We're working with a firm in Boston that includes an epidemiologist who's really going to be looking at that space and analyzing it to understand how it can be safe for visitors and staff and what changes we can make to it to ensure that it is safe. I can tell you that personally I'm overjoyed to be here. I am so happy to be back and it's going, it's going super well. Jill Medvedow is the ICA's director. Reopening has been a Herculean effort, she says, not to mention a vital one. Like all the other nonprofits, cultural institutions and nonprofits more broadly, we took a big financial hit from being closed for four months. So How all, big was the hit? It was two plus million dollars. Medvedow says she's been exchanging reopening strategies with her counterparts in Boston and museums across the country. The priority, though, is the straight up return to art at a time when people want and need it more than ever. At the ICA, visitors will find exhibitions by two artists telling their stories. Sterling Ruby, a maker in all manner of materials, and Shabalala Self, painting and sculpting life and figures in textiles. Through the work of artists and work that is yet to be made, it's going to help us make sense of this time. That is what artists do. They ask us to put ourselves in someone else's shoes, I might say in someone else's body right now, and to see the world differently. So I think that it is the arts that are going to help us make sense of what we've been through.